Hello friends! In today's video, I'm going to show you how to use a floppy EMU to move Apple II files from your modern computer to a vintage Mac with Apple II eCard installed. If you don't already have a floppy EMU, you're really missing out. Now I know some of you purists, you only want to use the original disk drives that were used way back in the day to give you that overall vintage computing experience, but this little guy, it can be a big help to you. Uh, it works with vintage Apple computers that have an internal or external floppy disk connector on them, uh, such as many vintage Macs, the Apple Lisa, and of course the Apple II series. And the floppy EMU ships with the Apple II compatible firmware pre-installed. Now if you do decide to buy one of these uh, after watching this video today, I would strongly suggest you get it uh, with the optional deluxe kit, which includes this pretty nice frosted case and that will help protect it from accidental short circuits that could damage the floppy EMU and or uh, your vintage computer. Now for the past few years I've been using this Model B and uh, it served me well but I decided this summer to buy Model C because it has one specific Apple II feature which the older models lack. Now here's a feature side-by-side -side that I made uh, for comparing all three floppy EMU models. Starting off at the top here, I personally like full-sized SD cards <laughs> instead of micro SD, but uh, models B and C still offer some very compelling reasons to upgrade if you own an old model A. First of all, SD card hot swap uh, is great because you can remove the SD card uh, when the floppy EMU is still powered and then use your modern computer to copy files to it and then swap it back in Which is a very nice feature uh, Next models B and C have improved protection circuitry Which is something that the model A doesn't have and that just means that they can handle voltage spikes and surges much better now model A uh, required a special universal adapter paid option if you wanted to have full five and a quarter inch drive compatibility on the Apple II, 2 Plus, and 2E, and to give you three and a half inch drive compatibility on the 2GS and the 2C Plus, that adapter's functionality is built in to models B and C. Now there are three key features that in my opinion separate model C from its uh, two siblings. And the first is the move to a push-pull SD card slot, which some users prefer over the old spring-loaded push-push slot of uh, models A and B. Next, model C offers an organic LED, which offers higher resolution, white text on a dark background. And the downside to this, though, is that the text is smaller and harder for my 51-year-old eyes to see. Another downside is that the backlight dims after a few seconds to prevent burn-in, and the older models with a regular LCD kept the backlight glowing at the same intensity, which is something I prefer. Last but not least, Model C has a dual five and a quarter inch floppy drive feature, uh, which is pretty neat. It eliminates the need to swap disks when using Apple II software uh, that takes advantage of that. And that's really one of the reasons that I bought version C, even though I already had Model B. The floppy EMU comes with a 4GB microSD card that includes just about 440 megabytes of software. If we look at the Apple II related software, we can see it comes in at just about 27 megabytes. Of course, the games, utilities, and other software is included on various disk images with the uh, .po, .2mg, and so on file name extensions. There's still plenty of space for you to put your favorite software on there, more than three and a half gigabytes in fact. One nice thing you can download and copy to your SD card is a 32 megabyte disk image put together by Craig of apple-2.com. Except for the ASM download, all of the 32 megabyte disk images shown on this page contain the same exact files and they only differ by the boot screen artwork. So let's go ahead and download this floppy EMU artwork version. And here's our file that we downloaded. Uh, the roughly 32 megabyte file size is showing that it's a hard disk image and not a floppy disk image. And 32 megabytes is the largest image size we can use with the Apple II. So we'll go ahead and copy that to the SD card. Now it's important that when we copy these 
hard disk images to the floppy EMU SD card that we leave them in the root directory and do not put them in the Apple II stuff or any other folder. And that's just the way that the floppy EMU works. It's also very important that we rename the file. You'll see some files down here named Smart0 and Smart1. We actually can only have a single file with the name Smart0. So we'll just rename this. I'll rename this something else. And then we need to rename this so that it starts out with S-M-A-R-T-0. And then anything else after that, this hyphen, it doesn't even have to be a hyphen, but anything else after that doesn't matter. And of course you need a file name extension. Now the floppy EMU allows for up to four hard drive images to be named Smart0, Smart1, Smart2, Smart3. And this is great if you have a real Apple II computer to connect the floppy EMU to, but sadly the 2E card in my Color Classic only recognizes one hard disk image named Smart0. So if you have multiple hard disk images on your SD card, you will unfortunately need to put the SD card into your modern computer so you can change the name to Smart0 before you can use it with your Mac that has the 2E card installed. So to connect everything, we just take out the micro SD from the adapter, put it inside here. Then we take our adapter, which connects to the ribbon cable and connect that to the 2E card's Y cable. And then just uh, connect our ribbon cable right in there. Now, one other thing we need to connect is a joystick because many Apple II games just won't work with a keyboard. And uh, this fully tested CH Products Mach 3 joystick was very kindly sold to me by Javier Rivera. Please check out his YouTube channel if you're not familiar with it already. And uh, we just need to connect its nine pin connector into the Y cable port here. I should add that this little gizmo here, this cylinder, is actually a ferrite core choke and it filters out high frequency noise. Now there is one remake of this that I've seen sold online and unfortunately it doesn't have this. It would be nice if they could add that to improve it. I don't know if it's adversely affecting anything or not but clearly Apple added it for a reason and that's because I guess there was noise coming through this line and that would affect gameplay to some extent. Uh, it's not here on this floppy connector, probably because it wasn't needed. But I just want to mention that. Uh, so sometimes you can find clamp-on chokes that you can add yourself. But uh, that's the purpose of this little guy right here. And then we just need to plug in our Y cable. I will now go ahead and power on. Okay, we now quickly need to push the middle button here. I'll now go ahead and explain the menu commands. The top one is the Apple II three and a half inch floppy, which is only for the 2GS and 2C+. The next two down are five and a quarter inch floppy drives that are for .dsk, do, po, nib, was, and .2 mg disk images. I put some notes in the bottom left for you there. Never use the dual five and a quarter inch mode with a big mess of wires, daisy chainer, or AB switch. Next one down is the smart port hard disk for one 800K to 32 megabyte in size .po .hdv 2mg disk image. Next one down is the smart port unit 2 which is for the 2GS only. And last but not least we have the Unidisc 3.5 which is for an 800K sized .dsk do po or .2mg disk image. Do we want to choose smart port hard disk? And then it says turn off the computer, but um, I don't like to do that. <laughs> I just push the top button up here to reset it. And then this time we will just leave it like it is. And there it is. It says FE 32 megabytes. And that's what I showed you on Craig's site, apple-2.com that we downloaded. Okay, I'm booted to the desktop in system 7.1. I have clockometer set up here showing that my 68040, this is the full FPU version, is overclocked to just, just a tad bit over 40 megahertz. And I wanted to mention this because some people have said that the 2E card uh, graphics emulation, because it uses the max video circuitry, that varies by the CPU speed of your Mac. So 
I don't have any other machine that this 2E card can run in to compare with, but uh, this, even at 40 megahertz, is probably faster than a lot of what you are using. I can actually overclock higher than this, as I mentioned in my part one video, but I want to have access to version uh, 2.2.1 of the 2E startup, and the only way I can do that is to have it clocked down to about 40 megahertz or so. And this 2E startup that I'm going to launch right now is version 2.2.2 D1, which is the version compatible with this Mystic. I'm going to hold down the option key and that will take me into the 2E option panel as I mentioned in my first video. And I always, you know, I actually wish it would open directly to this without me having to press the key because you're always going to want to tweak settings, you know. Anyway, I have the speed set on normal. That means one megahertz uh, for the Apple 2E. Uh, clock speed and we can see here that my floppy EMU, by the way, if you notice a little flickering, this does not flicker in real life. When you're looking at it with your eyes, it does not flicker and it's probably dimmed right now. Well, anyway, as I mentioned, it does dim, but uh, it does flicker because I had to adjust <laughs> my camera so that this wouldn't flicker. There wouldn't be a, a thick black line, you know, scrolling up vertically. And so I, I optimize the camera for this and not for this. So in other cases, in other parts of this video where you see that it's not flickering, that's because I did a lot of editing work to make sure it wouldn't flicker and be so bothersome to you. But I'm kind of zoomed out. I'm not zoomed into the screen because I want you to see what I'm doing here with the mouse, with the keyboard, and also uh, with the joystick. So we have my Drive 1 is showing an Omni disk in there and that's important for this to work, so that's why you should always come into this option panel first. Uh, if you don't come directly in here and you go directly into the 2E, that's fine. You just need to come back here and check it uh, to make sure that you have the white little icon here that looks like an external disk drive, and that is Unidisk and what this is currently using, the smart port. So we'll go ahead and click Continue. Okay, and then here's your splash screen. You, you of course, have seen this before. Uh, we just press any key to go into Bitsy Buy, and Bitsy Buy is just, you know, I'm not an Apple II expert, but it's just a software that is set up on the drive such that when you quit something, it comes here. And it's kind of a convenient way for you to use the arrow keys to go through the disk hierarchy without having to type in commands at the command line. And uh, so what we want to do first and foremost is uh, demonstrate some games here. And I think that's what probably most of you <laughs> are going to be doing. So on the screen, it's showing ProDOS, FE.System. Uh, if we choose FE.System, anything with .System is an executable. So if I do that, it just brings you back here. Okay. And uh, basic system would take you to a basic prompt, and we don't want to do that. And then down here, you've got directories. We've got three directories of games, and then we've got utilities down here. And the utilities includes things like uh, copy to plus and so on. And then to go back up a hierarchy, you press the escape key, and it takes you back up a level. So we have games.disk-based, games.file-based, and games.mecc. MECC, for those of you who are familiar with uh, the Apple II series, Oregon Trail, right? Oregon Trail and all its cousins <laughs> are uh, from the same company and they're all in this particular directory. And then we have, now the differences between disk-based and file-based, I'm not really clear on that, but there is a usability difference. And so let's just go ahead and do the less problematic <laughs> disk-based one first. Now there's there's uh, five different directories here, divided up alphabetically, A to E, F to J, and so on. And what I'm going to show you now is Choplifter. So that's going to be C. That's in the upper one here. And then we can just type a C on the keyboard. And then that'll take us to the C section. And then we can see Choplifter is right here. And so we're going to just press Return. And then it says Loader.System. So it seems to work whether you choose loader.system or choplifter, but we'll just go ahead and choose loader.system. Okay, and there it is. And once again, remember, we're running the 
uh, 2E's CPU at the stock 1.0 megahertz. Now, I have done a lot of checking on this, and there are some games that just don't work with the keyboard. And I've heard some people say, oh, no, 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 it's uh, A, Z, and, and so on. These keys uh, should work. Well, if, a, if the keyboard does work, it seems that you have to push down caps lock and uh, to, to make it work. But I've not been able to, you know, pressing all the keys, I've not been able to figure out any keys on this keyboard which actually work and allow you to use the keyboard. So this seems to be one of those games that definitely does require uh, the joystick to run. So I'll go ahead and press return. And uh, again, if I push all the keys, arrow keys, you see nothing is happening. <laughs> but if I use my joystick, well, then it starts to move, right? You can see him move, and then you push the buttons, and he drops bombs if you do the orange button, or you push the button on the top of the stick, and uh, then you can fly him around like this. And then to get him, we face the CRT and I'm not very good at this game. <laughs> I need to practice more. And then there's there's airplanes that come with uh, rockets that that shoot you. Now if you're if you're familiar with the Mac version of this game, it's Armor Alley. Armor Alley is the game uh, on the Mac side and of course it's higher resolution but only black and white. Uh, but uh, pretty much the same game, although there are some differences. And we just land and see the, let the guys out there so you can get some points. Now I could go and show you more about Choplifter, but this is just one example of a game that requires you to have a joystick. So if you're thinking, oh, I've got a 2E card, I've got a Color Classic, or I've got a compatible LC computer, uh, and I just want to use the keyboard, well, you're going to exclude a fair amount of software that just will not run unless you have a joystick. Now there's nothing magical about this particular Mach 3 joystick. Uh, it's just considered to be one of the best and that's why I wanted to buy it. But the Apple joystick works. There's one that's from Kraft and there's other ones that will work just as well. Um, I haven't tested those so I can't say <laughs> how, is, how, how much better this is compared to them. But uh, basically you just want to have a joystick to ensure maximum compatibility. Uh, with most of your games. Now you, you might be saying at this point, okay, how do you get out of here to do something else? And the answer is you need to reset the Apple II. And how do you do that? We hold down the Apple key, control key, and then the reset button. And then that takes us back to the splash screen. And if you have it overclocked, if we go back to command or the Apple, open Apple key here, control key and escape, then it will take us back to the option panel and we can choose fast if we want. But uh, some games don't like fast and that's why it really gives you the option uh, to switch between them. So let's, uh, for example, try a game that is impacted by the speed. So we'll go back here and click this and then we want to do games. We'll do disk based. I'll show you what file based is like a little bit later, but disc based. Let's try Mrs. Pac Man or Miss Pac Man. I don't think she's married, right? <laughs> LML. Okay, go here and then type M and then look for MS. I always look for MRS because I think she's married, but it's actually MS. Miss Pac Man. There we go. And then do the loader system. And again, because it's set on the slow speed, it takes a little bit longer than normal to load. The default settings, one or two players, default is one player. It's defaulting to a keyboard, defaulting to a keyboard. But for the longest time, let's go ahead and start this game. The sound effects aren't bad, but man, that, that's pretty awful. <laughs> now, the funny thing is the arrow keys, right and left, they work. But the ups and downs, ups and down arrow keys don't work for some reason. But after a while, I figured out it's A and Z, right? 
A and Z. Even so, uh, because because the keyboard, the keys A and Z over here, and this is over here, I'm not sure I really like that. And so you can get uh, your joystick to work, although we chose keyboard, and so now the only way to uh, get out of this is either to wait and die, or, well, here we go, we died. And uh, then we have to go back into the main screen and type J, and that changed the joystick. And now if we press space, we can then we can then use our joystick. And it works quite well, but I don't know about those sounds. <laughs> A little bit obnoxious. <laughs> uh, the Apple II E didn't really have a fancy audio system, so I'm sure some of you will probably say, hey, that's actually pretty good. But compared to a Commodore 64, it's not good. <laughs> it's, uh, it leaves a lot to be desired. And of course, I'm coming from the Mac side, Vintage Macs, and uh, even Macs didn't have such amazing sound, but it was a lot better than Apple II sound. Okay, can I finish this level? Can I finish it, folks? Ah, 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 eh, eh. I did! Okay, all right. So I'm not going to play it any more than that. But uh, now let's go ahead and get out of here. It's a uh, control command reset basically resetting your whole computer in order to get back to the main screen. And now I'm going to show you how the file-based games look. Again, divided alphabetically. However, some of these games have problems, and that's why at the top it says no.buffer.fix. No.buffer.fix. Now before I choose that, I'm just going to show you uh, some games that have problems. And one of them is named Autobahn. There's probably a lot more than that, but I haven't <laughs> checked each and every game. Autobahn is a car game. Now, if I press return right here, it says no buffers available. The game doesn't load. And this is a known problem. And uh, the creator of this, to get back, I'll just do a... Uh... Oh, blasted. <laughs> If you push the wrong thing, the Mac will uh, give you some problems. Let me go back in. Well, it didn't like that. <laughs> it didn't like that. So I'll go ahead and restart. Interestingly, if you press Command, Control, and Restart, it's actually the same thing for Restart the Mac. Uh, luckily, once you're in the 2E environment, it will restart only the 2E and not restart the Mac. But um, whenever you accidentally push the wrong key combinations and then get into the little, uh, not Max bug, but uh, Max bug like command line there, then it, it gives you some trouble. So I'm going to speed this up so it'll get back to where you want to be. Okay, here we are. <laughs> so, uh, going into file based again, Autobahn is the one that um, was going to give us the trouble, right? And we saw that. So I'm going to go up to this level. It says no buffer fix. I'm going to press that. And uh, it's basically giving you some information here, but sparing you the need to read all of this because it's not really clear what you need to do anyway by, <laughs> by reading this. Uh, what you need to do, <laughs> it's a bother. It is a bother, but you need to change directories by typing in prefix. That's Apple II lingo for change directory. Prefix. And then we know that we want to go into a.2.e. And then we know the name of the game is Autobahn. However, in order to load it from the command line, we have to type a hyphen. And then we type in auto, b-a-h-n. 
and press return. And this time it works. So, uh, well, <laughs> file-based programs, for whatever reason, there's some of them that have that problem, and that is the fix. You're going to have to do some command line drudgery uh, in order to make it work. Now, this seems to be one of those games to where you can't use a, a joystick. <laughs> it doesn't work with a joystick. So instead, we need to use uh, the arrow keys. Now, I don't know, I'm not going to zoom my camera in, but you can probably see this, maybe. <laughs> uh, my car seems to be fairly stable, but these uh, other cars, they seem to be jerky, like this. They seem to be doing this. And I tested this in an emulator, and I'm not seeing that. So maybe this is what some people are saying, that uh, the graphics on the Mac, which has a 2E card, isn't quite as fast as a real, two, real Apple 2E computer. Now, those of you who have run this game, Autobahn, on a real Apple II, you can tell me if these other cars are vertically going up and down like they're schizophrenic or something. Um, is, it, is it this bad on the actual machine or not? I don't know, but I just wanted to show you that. And uh, then if we do reset, which again is open Apple control and the reset power button up here, and we can go back and I'll show you another one, file-based. And the other game that has given me trouble is Dawn Treader. So I'll type a D. And if we just choose it right out like this, again, no buffers available. So restart it, go back, have to do the manual command line ordeal in order to fix that. Prefix A dot T-O. And remember, my caps lock is down, which is why everything is coming out the way it needs to be. If your caps, locks, caps lock is not down, you'll need to hold down the shift key because everything needs to be capital. And then we have to type a hyphen. And then you have to remember what the name is. <laughs> Don Treader, I think, is what the name was. Goody, I got it right. Okay, and then it says, do you want joystick or keyboard? So that's nice of them. Okay, we'll do joystick. And there we go. So just moves around, and I'm not an expert on this game by any means. And I don't know if this is a C.S. Lewis game because it's Dawn Treader. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's... Okay, so anyway, that's what I wanted to show you there. And um, now, joystick. In the utilities, actually this version of it doesn't seem to have the joystick program in here. But even the version of this, there's been multiple versions of this on apple-2.com. Um, even the version of the joystick adjustment utility. It was very basic and I don't really like it, so I'm going to go back to my Mac and show you something that you can add to your floppy EMU that is a whole lot better. Okay, so here I am on my Mac. Uh, here's the UL, URL to Asimov. Uh, I'm going to put all of the links that you see in this video in the text description below so you don't have to just look at it from the screen. And uh, what we're going to get is this little guy here called Computer Inspector. And we can see it right here. So uh, we can see that the file size is 143K. That means if we go, here's my uh, big mess of wires SD card for the floppy EMU. I'm going to put it inside the Apple II stuff. I'm not going to put it in the root. So you want to put it in the Apple II stuff. And you can see three and a half inch and five and a quarter inch. Anything about this size is going to be five and a quarter inch. And since it is a utility, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put it in this area right here. And you can just leave the file name just like this, but uh, I'm a little bit more meticulous about things because I'm only going to use it for <laughs> to be a one-trick pony. 
uh, joystick calibration. <laughs> and that'll help me to remember. When I need to calibrate my joystick, I need to use this disk image. Okay, so now I can uh, eject the SD card and go back to the Color Classic. Okay, I'm back at the Mac. He is uh, giving me the question mark saying, no SD card, help me. And he's flashing the LED like mad up here because he is mad. He, has no, he doesn't have an SD card. So I put it in, press reset here. He's now got a happy face. And then I'm gonna quickly push this, uh, the middle button. And I don't want to choose a smart port hard disk this time. I want to choose the second one from the top which is Apple II, five and a quarter inch floppy, and it says turn off computer, and then I just reset with the reset button. Okay. And then uh, it says there's a folder hierarchy here, so Apple II stuff is what we want to go into, five and a quarter inch, 140K, and utilities, and I'm just gonna look for my name, joystick, the one I said, and Joystick calibration, there it is. So I'm gonna choose that one. And then, just a matter of going into 2E startup with the option key held down so I can show you some options here. Um, I like it faster, so I'm gonna set it to fast. It's only 1.9 megahertz, but it's still faster than 1.0. It does not gonna affect joystick calibration at all. Now, smart port, there's nothing in there because we're not using smart port now. And uh, we're just to going into slots. You can see that slot six is where our five and a quarter inch disk drive is. So there's nothing we need to do. It will just use that because I have it selected here. So I'll click continue. And we can see it's reading from the floppy EMU. And there we go. And then we can see here six is the joystick paddle test. So it looks like it's a little bit off. But um, I've actually been filming this a little bit out of sequence. <laughs> and uh, uh, the, the joystick uh, had an issue before I fixed it of where it would not go all the way over to the right and it would not go all the way down. So I made a video for the Apple II group on Facebook and it's low quality. I made it with my iPhone 7. So please forgive the low quality. I just didn't want to refilm that again uh, because I've done it out of sequence. So I'm going to show you uh, that clip which will explain the problem that I originally have. I'm going to show that to you right now. This is a Mach 3 joystick. I'm not touching it at all right now. Notice it's perfectly centered. That dark area. It's slightly flashing a little bit sometimes, but it's really dead on center. And what centers it is this and this. So it's centered. And if I move this, see it's going down. But even though I change these potentiometers, that doesn't affect how far down it goes. It doesn't affect how far to the right it goes. It doesn't affect that at all. So if I turn it back, okay, let's just go all the way, right? It went down, right? But now I'm pulling it all the way to the, to the bottom, but it doesn't affect the lower extremity. So now I'm gonna turn it back. You can see it's going up. And now it's dead center. And so I wanna test it just by flipping it like this, because sometimes this affects it too. So now it's not totally black because I'm a little bit off, right? If I go up. And now it's sort of black. Well, it's pretty much centered now. But what you can see is that even if I pull all the way over, it only goes this far. However, if I pull all the way to the left, it goes all the way to the zero point. You can see the zero there. If I pull all the way to the top, it goes to the zero point, right? You see Y is zero now. It goes all the way to this corner. 
So yeah, it goes all the way over here on the left and top just fine. But in terms of how far it goes to the bottom, I'm pulling it all the way down, folks. And that's as far as it'll go. And all the way to the right, well, that's as far as it'll go to the right. In order to fix that, I had to open up my joystick, which uh, <laughs> requires me to flip it over and remove all of the feet, which are really stuck on there well, <laughs> so as to <laughs> remove the screws. And uh, it's really unfortunate that they designed it that way, but I guess they didn't want people opening it up. And once open, I had it connected and powered and I tested various capacitors in my part stock to see which values would resolve the problem. And what you need to do is just put a non-polarized capacitor across the two points for each potentiometer here and here. There's nothing that goes here, so you don't have to worry about this. So you put a capacitor across these two points and then across these two points. And you start off with a small value, say maybe say one nanofarad, and see if that bumps your little crosshair in the right direction. And ultimately, I found that um, I needed to put a 10 nanofarad capacitor here. Actually, about 4.7 probably would have been good, but I didn't have that value. So I just went to the next one up, which is 10 nanofarads. And then I also uh, found that I needed a 2 nanofarad capacitor up here and I just happen to have a polyester film capacitor which again is not polarized and I put it across here and that was the fix and now with these two capacitors my crosshairs will reach the outer extremities and after putting the screws back in I thought well retaping the stock feet I mean the feet are in good condition and they're perfectly sized but I didn't know how best to retape them and I really didn't want to use glue so I decided to buy a couple set of feet. Now I did measure it, it's like 12.8 millimeters. And unfortunately the only blacks that I could find were 13 millimeters. And you'd have to bend it and it wouldn't really make that good contact. And it's unfortunate because these would look stock. But I did find these clear in a 12.8 millimeter size and they fit perfectly in there. And well, with clear, you don't have to guess anymore where the screws are on the bottom. You can see it pretty clearly. So it doesn't look stuck, but um, if you can find black in a 12.8, 12.8 uh, is the maximum width, and that is what you would need. Okay, we're back with the fixed joystick. Now, um, you can see that the crosshair isn't quite in the middle, and that's the great thing about this Mach 3 joystick. We've got these two little dials here and here which will allow us to dial that in. So we can try to, make, try to make it black, which would be dead center. There it is. So it's dead center right now. And usually you wanna just check it like this. It's never gonna be perfectly center. It's gonna be a little bit off, you know, but um, right now I'll show you. Pull it all the way to the left. That was never a problem, and it goes to zero. And that's what it's showing here, zero, for the x direction. And if I push it all the way up, it's showing zero uh, for the y direction, which is great. And now with the capacitors installed, I can pull it all the way down, and there it is, 255 for the y. And then I pull it all the way to the right, and 255 uh, for the x. So the addition of those two capacitors uh, resolve the issue. And I should just mention that I really didn't see a problem with it before I added the capacitors, but there could be some games that really want you to have the joystick to go out to the maximums, and so that's really why I added it. I'm not sure how important it is. And also keep in mind that when you do the same trick to adjust your joystick, uh, you're probably going to need different capacitor values than mine. And so if you have a batch of um, mylar capacitors or ceramic capacitors, non-polarized, uh, usually from uh, about one nanofarad to maybe 10 or 20 nanofarads, and you have a variety of values, then you can try those and use the minimum amount of capacitance required uh, to give you the full alignment over here. 
and uh, then you should be good to go. Now, I should also mention, though, that this is the only Apple II computer that I have, this II e-card. And so I'm not really worried about what I've done to this joystick because I'm not going to use it with any other Apple II. But in your case, if you adjust your joystick to go all the way to the edges using capacitors, then I don't know if that's really going to be best if you then plug this into a regular Apple II. You can probably just use these adjustments to set it, and it should be fine. But I'm not an expert on this. Uh, Javier Rivera had a, a nice video that he added some capacitors. So I, I just kind of defer to the experts. I mean, that's how I learned how the, the capacitor trick in the first place. And uh, those guys can be more informative on the subject than I am. But uh, just to let you know that if it doesn't, I want to hear from you actually. If you have an Apple IIe card, it doesn't have to be in a Color Classic Mystic. If it's any, in any kind of LC compatible computer, whenever you connect a joystick, especially the Mach 3, that's what I'm really curious about, but you can tell me about any joystick. Do you have the same problem? You, you pull the stick all the way to the right, but it doesn't go all the way to the right. You pull the stick all the way down, but it doesn't go all the way down. And if you have that problem too, please let me know in the comments because I'm really quite curious. But uh, this also tests the buttons, right? As I mentioned in the other video. So everything is now great with the joystick thanks to this software. So let's open Apple Control Restart. Uh, if we just restart, it's going to go back to the computer inspector again. So we don't want to do that. What I'm going to do is get, go back to the Mac environment and then I'm going to need to quit out of the Apple IIe options panel there. And then I'm going to restart this by pushing the button, the restart button here. And I'm going to quickly push the middle button here. And I'm going to choose smart port hard disk again, which is the third one up from the bottom. And then restart it again. And now I'm going to relaunch this with the option key held down so you can see that it will now appear in our smart port disks. And, well, actually it doesn't. <laughs> so you have to drag it up. Okay, so now it's there. And I can click continue. And we'll see it loading here. Yes. Okay. And then we will do uh, disk-based which I like a lot better. We'll do K because you know what I'm going to do, folks, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Karateka. All right. Let's do Karateka. And uh, I have this set on 2 megahertz, so, or 1.9 megahertz, actually, which might make the sound to be a little bit different. <laughs> yeah, it's, the sound is a little bit too fast. <laughs> well, that's probably not so great, right? Uh, so, okay, I, I need to reduce it. So it just, you know, you just have to do that sometimes. Click to the normal speed, restart the 2E, and then you're going to have to do it all over again. And now it's going to be slower because we're down to one megahertz, but that's okay. Disk space, K, Karateka, load it. And now the sound will be better, but slower. Come on, guy. Load it, load it, load it. Here we go. Broderbun presents. That's right. That's the right sound effects. And what mountain is that, folks? It's a quiz. What mountain is it? It's actually closer to me than it is to the rest of you, probably, unless you're in Japan. Yes, this is Japan. Okay. So now let's uh, test out our joystick, shall we? Oh, here we go, right? Right? So here we go. We got the joystick going on here. Let's test our kicks and punches, and we go... Pull it up to the upper right, and then, uh, actually, that's run. 
Okay, here we go. And now let's go with the kick here. Oh, he punched me. I'm not doing well. Come on. But you can see how useful the joystick is. Although I'm doing <laughs> I'm doing a little bit bad here. <laughs> Come on, there we go. I kick you in the face three times. Yes, four times, five times. I like kicking to the face. You would think it would take him down faster, but actually it's not. Although I'm starting to win now. It's hard to play games when you're talking and making a video. So that's my excuse. Okay, we got you. So that's just one example of a game that uh, takes advantage of your joystick and probably benefits from it being fully calibrated. Okay, here we are back on my modern Mac and I've loaded up uh, Total Replay. Now, when I first heard people talking about this, I said, what in the heck is that? <laughs> you know, everybody seems to know about it but me. And if you're like me, then you don't know what it is either. Um, you can see the word play in it. And total means it's totally awesome. It's got the total amount of games. Well, actually, it doesn't have the total amount of games. It has 32 megabytes of games, which is a lot. Uh, but the games have changed from version to version, and currently it's at, as of the making of this video, 5.0 Beta 2. And uh, it really has a lot of games on it, and I've been using version 5 since it was in alpha. And I should mention that I found some problems with it, at least with the 2E card, so I opened a, a bug report on their GitHub, because Flapple Bird and Prince of Persia gave me a permanent black screen. And uh, thankfully, if you, we go through here, I listed all the details, and then towards the very end, uh, it says we've been able to fix it, and they've resolved the problem. So when you download the Beta 2 or higher versions, you will get the fixed version, and you'll be able to run uh, Flapple Bird and Prince, Prince of Persia 2 and other games that would uh, previously give you a black screen. So we'll go ahead and click this to download it and again a text description contains uh, the link for you to download it more easily and here we are on the desktop here's the file that we just downloaded uh, this is a 32 megabyte hdv hard drive file so i'm going to copy it to the root okay and uh, then we need to make it smart zero right so currently we have Craig's, um, we have the uh, apple-2.com's uh, floppy EMU thing in there, smart zero. So I want to rename this, uh, I'll just call it smart zero hyphen total replay 5B2. So it's easy to see on my floppy EMU and then just go back to the uh, color classic. Okay, I have the card in there and it's showing total replay uh, on the screen now. So I'm going to load 2E startup with the option key held down again to confirm that everything is okay. And uh, I'm going to set it to fast. I like it fast most of the time whenever games accept that and it's automatically in there. So great. So let's now click continue. And then we can try out Prince of Persia, which is one of the games that was fixed for the 2E card in Beta 2. And if you don't do anything, then it'll rotate throughout the games and just show you some, some uh, splash screens of them. But if you type on the keyboard like P, R, Prince of Persia, and then it says press return to play, so we can see the LED here, it's uh, flashing, right? So it's accessing, and there we go. Yeah, 
actually probably the sound on this one. A lot of games just... That's not quite right. Yeah, a lot of games just like one megahertz. Okay, I'm gonna speed it up so you don't have to wait and I'm just gonna fix that right now. Does that sound different? <laughs> I can't really tell the difference. Maybe it was okay before. But, I mean, you just gotta be impressed that a game like Prince of Persia can run on a one megahertz. <laughs> one megahertz CPU, okay. So here we go. Prince of Persia, ba -bum, ba -bum. And we can use our joystick for this. 60 minutes left. I think, yeah, if I push down the, the orange button here and then I don't run, I can walk. Then I can jump up. But there's actually nothing up here. And then uh, I can jump like that. But actually, I want to go down. I'm not going to play this whole game for you, obviously. <laughs> but uh, this is, in my opinion, one of the more fun games. I mean, the graphics are great. The sound is pretty good on the Apple II here. And uh, do a running jump. I think I needed to step on this little guy. Yep. And go through. Oops. And that's what happens if you die. And I actually did that accidentally, not deliberately. <laughs> okay. So let's say we don't want to do this game anymore. We're going to check Flapple Bird, right? So let's, we have to restart. Op open Apple Control and then the reset button there. And Flapple Bird is, well, probably once you see it, you will recognize it. That look familiar? <laughs> Somebody ported it <laughs> to the Apple II. And I'm like with I'm like the 8-bit guy, man. I mean, this game is tough. E you know, even on other platforms it's tough, but it's even harder here. So let's see if I can do it. My goodness. Tap to flap. Nope. <laughs> okay. Nope. I don't know about these vertical lines. Uh, I, I, I don't know, it just, it, it kind of bothers my eyes. But the thing about the, the two E, uh-oh. Okay, there we go. Uh, the two E card is we can change it to monochrome. Sometimes that makes games look better. Ooh. Uh, well, <laughs> that looks a lot, that looks a lot worse than I thought. <laughs> A lot worse. <laughs> yeah, this is a game that definitely needs to be in color. It's not optimized for monochrome. Okay, we're back in my modern computer again, and now I'm visiting the 8-bit guy because I want to finish out this video with some more interesting downloads. Uh, Petski Robots. Um, wait, is that available on the Apple II? And yeah, it is right here, right? Apple II. I'm not so sentimental about boxes, especially since I'm gonna have to pay through the nose to get it shipped over to Japan. So I just went with the El Cheapo $10 download only. I've already purchased and downloaded that. And another very interesting piece of software, I mean, you just absolutely have to have, is uh, this software here, which is the Apple II Desktop. This is uh, really some, some pretty neat software here. So we'll download the English version there. And uh, then last but not least, I want to show you software that takes advantage of dual drives. And this game, Shellshock, does that. Okay, so we've got our Petski robots here. Let's, uh, we've got an 800K disc and we see we have a five and a quarter. So we'll open this up 
And in the games folder, I will put the five and a quarter inch version in here. And then in the three and a half inch, I'll put the 800K version in there. And then Shellshock is, if we look at the file size, okay, two five and a quarter inch, we see the 143K over here. So I will put both of those into five and a quarter inch games. Shellshock, there they are. And then we have the Apple II desktop. Uh, a variety of versions here, but the biggest is 800K, so that means three and a half inch. And by the way, this is 800K.2MG, this is 800K.HDV, and in the uh, floppy EMU documentation, it says that 2MG performs worse than other disk formats for technical reasons i did not verify with steve chamberlain i don't really know why or how much worse it performs but it does say that in the documentation so i'm going to go with the hdv instead and it has the same content so it should be just fine and now we go back to our color classic okay we're back at the color classic i've got the sd card in there and i am choosing the topmost item apple II 3.5 inch floppy and then we'll reset that then launch well we'll load in uh, it says uh, apple II stuff three and a half inch 800k and i'll just show you a2 desktop to begin with the option key held down let's make sure it's okay well in this case uh, let's see here oh that's right okay so uh, the reason that it's not showing up here is because we cannot use that <laughs> I chose it wrong <laughs> we have to choose um, uh, Unidisc 3.5. Sorry about that. This is a video about learning experiences, right? So <laughs> Unid it has to be Unidisc 3.5. It cannot be the topmost 3.5. And then once we choose that, then we go and we choose our 3.5 inch disc, which is A2 desktop. Okay. We got it. And but we're going to have to reload this again and hold down the option key and i'm going to choose fast because i know it goes better on fast and now yep we got to pull the icon up into slot five and i know it's not going to look good in color but i just want to show you how bad it looks go But this software is pretty neat because, well, I'm a Mac user by, you know, mainly. So, of course, if you're a Mac user uh, at heart, you're going to really love what you're about to see. It does really tax your machine. So um, you need to have a fairly powerful machine accelerated. Well, you can only get 1.9 megahertz on the 2E card, but if you've got a souped up real Apple II, then you'll get even more benefit out of it. But uh, I would say it transforms your Apple II more into something like the 2GS than it does the Mac, although it does look very similar in many ways to the vintage Macintosh operating system. And this is taking a long time to load just due to the slowness. Even though it's 1.9 meg megahertz accelerated, it's still pretty slow overall. And you can see, <laughs> you know, all of the text, it's just not usable in color, right? Totally not usable. So open Apple, control, escape. We need to switch it to monochrome. Then we can go back and now it looks beautiful. <laughs> it looks absolutely beautiful. And uh, the thing about the mouse though is it's not as good as the Mac mouse. It's kind of bad actually. <laughs> it's not a great experience. But Apple II desktop and then it tells you, hey, you're running one version 1.2 beta. And uh, you've got various things like control panels, uh, date and time. It even has a joystick guy here so you can try him out. 
yep. Goes to all of the outer extremities and yep. You've got the buttons all testing out, so that's pretty neat. And uh, what else? It's got, uh, uh, goodness gracious, this mouse is <laughs> pretty horrible. Screensavers, flying toasters, and there we go. Now it flickers. You can tell me if this happens on a real Apple II or not. It probably does because I tested this in an emulator. And don't worry folks, I'm gonna cover that emulator, but just not in this video because it's gonna make it too long. But it does flicker. Um, I don't think that destroys usability, but in fact, it's pretty neat that you can even have this on it at all. And then we've got Matrix, although that doesn't really look so <laughs> like the movie, does it? But I guess it's similar. Melt. Uh, I guess it takes a long time to load. It's doing the flashing thing here. Or maybe it just doesn't want to load. We'll skip that. Uh, you, you've got a calculator. You've got a calendar. I'm not going to show you all of the features, but you can see, hey, that looks a lot like <laughs> what you're going to find on Mac OS. And uh, yeah, it, it really does. You can do all sorts of things with this. And um, it's even more useful on an emulator, so that's why I'm going to do actually a part three video to go more into that. But uh, you've got the Git Info, somewhat similar to the Mac. It tells you creation date and last modified date and lots of interesting things like that. And then we can open up the Open Apple and O will also work. And uh, what else do we have here? Sample media. We'll try that. Now this is the Monarch that I showed you in part one. And uh, if we switch back to get color, yep, it displays in color. But <laughs> Apple II desktop is really only usable, in my opinion, in uh, monochrome. Oh, what else? We've got the uh, Beagle Brothers logo. There we go. And then we have some uh, music. I'm not sure if it's going to play. Try Commando. Pretty neat. I would say this is perhaps the best audio I've gotten out of my 2E card experience. Really quite good. And then we've got Karataka's Yell. Uh, okay, it's accelerated, so <laughs> it, it played it too fast. But uh, hiya, or hiya, however you do it. Hello world, and well, you can explore this software and check it out yourself. It is really quite neat. So now, what else do I need to show you? Um, okay, Shellshock is on two disks. So what I want to do is restart this and push the middle button. So I can choose a third one from the top, Apple II dual five and a quarter inch. Dual five and a quarter inch. And then I'm restarting that and going into Apple II stuff, five and a quarter inch, games, shell shock down at the bottom. And shell shock is the game disc goes into drive one and then drive two is going to be uh, the map disc. Okay. So let's see if it works without, I'm just gonna restart it and it should just automatically work. Nothing we need to slot into any slots. And there it is, Shellshock. So, 
uh, to start this game. Actually, I'm still in monochrome, and it might actually be better in color, but let's just do it anyway. Press a key when ready to continue. Uh, player one. And it is loading. And then uh, game menu. Start a battle. Warm up. Practice. A lot of things you gotta choose before you can actually start doing the game. So it looks okay. Uh, it's not going to let me take advantage of my... Yeah, it seems to want to do the uh, arrow keys. But uh, he's killing me. If I change it to color, is it going to look better? Well, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if it looks better. You get a lot of that uh, fringing, you know, going on. So, although some of these graphics look a little bit better. I'm not going to go in depth. This video is already long enough. But basically, you don't have to do any disc swapping thanks to the dual five and a quarter inch feature of Floppy EMU. And uh, this game just luckily only comes on two discs. And that's perfect for this feature. You cannot download a WAS disk that has side A, side B, and put side A in one drive and side B in the other. That doesn't work. You need to have a game that has two or more floppy disks, and then you put two into the two drives here. And it just saves you some, some, some swapping. If you download the Ultima 4 series, uh, that comes on multiple disks. So you can put two out of, say, the four disks into here, and it reduces your disk swapping, but it doesn't totally eliminate it. So that's just kind of a quick overview of the benefit of having Model C, because you don't have this on the older Model B, and definitely not on the oldest Model A. And then last but not least, we want to do... Uh, let's see, what are we... Uh, the Petsky robots, right? So let's restart this and push our middle button, and we want to do Unidisc 3.5, right? All the way at the bottom, Unidisc 3.5. Restart that, get out of here, and if we go into smart port, we see it's there, but I'm not sure it's gonna work. Sometimes we have to, let's just restart after we select our Petsky robots, uh, three and a half inch, 800 K, it's called A2 Robots. We load it in, restart. Uh, I think we probably want to have color. Color, color, color. Yes, it's set for color. So let's restart it and see if it works. If it doesn't work, we may have to restart. No, it's working. Waking up the robots. Yeah, the audio isn't as good as the other platforms. If you've seen it on the Commodore or other platforms, the music is a lot better. Um, but if you're in an emulator, boy, when I do part three, you're going to be blown away. Okay, start game. We've got select map, difficulty, keyboard, color tiles. Well, we're on color tiles, so I'll go ahead and start the game and just show you how it looks in color. And uh, I think we need to do, yeah. We can use the numeric keypad, which is nice. But um, the colors are, are okay. I guess it's really the best that the Apple II can do. And it's not so bad, but I would say monochrome is probably 
even better. I just, I like, I'm used to the black and white max. Maybe that's why I, I think it's, it's better. Now, if we just change to monochrome and go back here, uh, it's not bad. It's actually sharper than it was before, but um, technically this is color graphics, right? I didn't choose the monochrome. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and exit game. Yes. And uh, see everything is sharper now. It kind of looks better overall. I want to change color tiles to mono tiles. And then keyboard, custom key. So yeah, we can't use the Mach 3, unfortunately. And start game. I wish I could use it, but now everything now is really sharp and really optimized. And so I've, I've played this game quite a bit and I find myself going back to the monochrome the most just because it reminds me of a black and white Mac like my SE30 and uh, there's no background music unfortunately because this is the Apple II but on the emula emulator you can you can get that and I know I didn't get my gun I know that but I'm just not I'm not gonna play the whole game for you I just want to show you how some of the graphics look and then if we get out of here and we have mono tiles, but if we choose color and go, then it looks like this and it's really quite bad. So <laughs> you don't want to choose mono tiles and then choose your 2E to be color. Uh, you want to choose the 2E to be, to be color and then choose color tiles or make it fully monochrome. But uh, overall, do I like this game? Yeah, I think it's worth $10. I think 8-Bit uh, Guy did a really good job on it, and uh, I suppose I could spend <laughs> a while playing it for you, but um, you can probably find some walkthroughs on YouTube already that will do a much better job than I can. Now some of the, the tiles, even though this is set up for monochrome, there's not a lot of, there's not a, a black outline around him, so he kind of fades in. So there's still some places that are not fully optimized, but I guess this is really the best you could do for the Apple II. And so I'm not going to complain about that. But once you get out here in the grass, uh, or I guess that's what this is, <laughs> and, and with the water, it's just not as nice as the color graphics. So you just have to make that choice. If you want it to be less sharp, but color and a little bit if you like to have it play it more playable in color, then yeah, you want to play it in color. But I tend to like the sharpness, even though the water really doesn't look like water. <laughs> and uh, so that's why I keep coming back to monochrome time and time again. So if you haven't checked out this game, check out some YouTube videos of it. And I, I would say at the very least, consider the $10 version. $10 isn't much. And... Uh, it doesn't even have to be for the Apple II, although that's what I'm showing you here. <laughs> it could be something else, you know. If you have got a Commodore, that's probably one of the best platforms to play on it. And, uh, yeah, that's right. So you have to... Pre there are certain keys you have to learn, and then you can get your pistol, and then you can go start shooting the bad guys, and uh, so on and so forth. But it's a pretty fun game. So be sure to check it out. I also want to show you how to handle Apple II files on a Blue SCSI and Mac SD. And I also want to show you the benefits of using the amazing Virtual 2 emulator. But all of that content is going to need to wait until part 3. By the way, I was looking for some 1990s Apple advertisements of the 2E card, so I posted over at the Apple II Enthusiast Facebook group, and Paul Hagstrom very kindly replied back to me with a downloadable PDF link to the summer 1993 edition of the Apple Catalog. 
These two catalog pages show the 2E card ad alongside the Platinum 2E with numeric keypad. You can see the price of the 2E card had dropped to $145 in 1993, which, adjusted for inflation, is almost $300 today. Interestingly, I paid $300 for my 2E card kit a few months ago, plus an additional $70 for shipping to Japan. 2E cards are neat, but certainly not cheap. On a more somber note, Earlier this year, I mentioned in one of my videos at the time that there was a medical emergency going on in my immediate family, and sadly, uh, that is still ongoing. The situation is that my wife was diagnosed with cancer in February of this year, and it was a very big shock to us. She underwent surgery to remove the cancer and then had six months of chemotherapy. When the therapy concluded, they did a CT scan and fortunately found a cancerous polyp in another organ of her body. So we are getting another surgery scheduled in this month of November and uh, most likely there will be cancer treatments that will follow that. The reason I'm telling you this is because even under normal circumstances, I'm just so busy with my day job and other just basic family commitments that I just don't have the free time to make more than one video for you per month. One good video, <laughs> that's up to my standards anyway. And uh, now with my wife's situation being what it is with hospitalization coming up and I have a son at home that I need to take care of, I'm going to have less time to invest in my video work. And I'm, I'm not saying it's gonna to come to a complete halt and it's certainly not going to be a permanent thing but um, I just want you to know what's going on. And especially for those of you uh, who donate to this channel, more specifically three of you who are very kind and generous in that um, there has been monthly ongoing donations for most of this year uh, from three people. And I just want you to know that I have no expectations of receiving any donations uh, in a month where I'm unable to provide you with a video. In fact, if you did donate in a month where I, was, I didn't have time to make a video, I'd feel quite bad. It's my obligation to provide you with great content. So please know that I am committed to making great video content for you uh, as soon as is humanly possible uh, in light of the obligations that I have now. So. Thank you very much for your kind understanding on this point. I appreciate it. In closing, I wish to humbly thank Stuart for his very kind first time PayPal donation to this channel. Thank you very much, Stuart. And I also wish to give a huge thank you to all of you for having made time to watch this video today. Please stay tuned for part three. I wish all of you a wonderful week. Bye-bye.